This is Crypto Kernels. I'm your host, Asa Kane. This episode, we're going to be revisiting Terra Luna, the platform, its native token, as well as its stablecoin, to see exactly what causes collapse and the ensuing aftermath that has followed. And we will also finally hear from the founder himself. Now, before we do so, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the like button, which is the thumbs up icon that you see directly beneath the video. It helps to share it with others just like yourself who are new and who want to start learning as much as they can so that they can avoid potential tragedy such as this. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, which is our icon that you see in the lower right hand corner of your video. What it does for you. It ensures that you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. Now, this article here, first of all, before I get into any of that, I want to show you the website itself. I've done so before. You click on that. Can be reached. This is the official website of the foundation of the platform. Can be reached. Why? It's been shut down for quite some time. Now, this article here is from Hacker Noon. It was published on July the 22nd, just about five weeks ago. And the author is just a thinker. Now, it says here, just a quick review for many of you who don't know, but Terra Luna is a cryptocurrency that was launched by Terra in July 2019. The Luna token is the native token of Terra a blockchain that was developed by a Korean-based firm known as Terraform Labs. The token was formerly known as Terra Luna and is now known as Terra Luna Classic. The asset is now famous for the crypto crash that occurred in May of this year. The token was as high as over $80 per token and it is now less than a penny per token. This article here, this is from business2business.com and it was written by Matt Williams about a week and a half ago. What is Terra and why did it crash 99.9%? The Terra Luna crypto token that crashed from $120 to two cents, 99% of which was within 48 hours of a black swan event on May the 11th through May 12th. Okay. Now this right here, skip over that skip over that that's not what I wanted um, wait one second here and this part here too I'll link this in the description it just basically goes over it breaks down the blockchain the token and the stable coin we've showed you all this before in our first video which debuted in December 24th of last year you can see it here now right here both were created by Terraform Labs, founded in 2018 and located in Seoul, South Korea. At the center of the story is Terraform Labs CEO Do Kwan. The idea to create an algorithmic stablecoin where Luna could not be burnt in order to mint UST to stabilize it whenever it loses its one-to-one -one peg to the dollar and vice versa. It's different to how other stablecoins like Tether and USDC function. For example, if UST hit 99 cents, a small amount of Luna would be burnt, and if it hit a dollar and one cents, a small amount of UST would be burnt. It worked until it didn't work. It is now emerged that Do Kwan has been behind a failed stablecoin project in the past called Basis Cash. In breaking news today on CoinDesk and Yahoo Finance. <sighs> ex Terra colleagues, Do Kwan was behind failed stable coin experiment basis cash why UST lost its peg no one knows and Do Kwan hasn't given an explanation to investors or the public one rumor is that this was co-coordinated attack in order to exploit Terra and cause a Bitcoin crash so that Wells will be able to buy in at a cheaper level why did Luna crash the 30 year old Do Kwan had something of a reputation on Twitter for arrogance in some circles, some think that it may have been a personal attack as well. One theory was put forward by the founder of Cardano, who we, which we've covered here on this channel, Charles Hoskinson, although he later deleted the tweet. He tweeted that a large institution borrowed 100,000 
Bitcoin from Gemini Exchange. They then exchanged a large amount of that Bitcoin for UST over the counter. With the Doquan at a discount, he agreed lower the, lowering the UST liquidity. That institution then allegedly dumped large amounts of both Bitcoin and UST on the market causing a liquidation cascade of leverage longs, slippage, and panic selling by investors, many of which sold their lunar holdings and unstaked their UST to sell it. So this was a domino effect, allegedly. The tweet alleges that Terra was a Ponzi scheme that didn't have enough Bitcoin reserves on hand to prevent that crash. None of these claims are verified and Gemini denied issuing any such loan. However, market manipulation is common in all financial markets. Hoskinson on the later tweet said that even if Gemini's tweet is accurate, someone did launch an attack on Terra. Who that it was is unknown for now and social media is rife with speculation and different explanations. Will Luna recover? Luna did pump over 100x from lows, still hasn't come close to making a recovery. The current Luna price still less than a penny. It may be impossible unless a large part of the hyperinflated circulating supply of Luna, now over 6.5 trillion Luna coins, is burnt. The Luna market cap would have to flip before it even reached 9 cents. So basically for everyone that was involved prior to May the 11th, it's virtually impossible for them to recover their losses. And that's what this is stating here. This article here is from Coinpedia.com, and it states Do Kwan's crimes will be brought to light. Vows anonymous, and it was written by Nadir Kapoor on June 27th, so a little over two months ago. Terror's demise shocked people all over the world. A few people issue significant threats to the project's developers, while others express severe loss and desire justice. Of course they do. South Korea continues to investigate the stunning collapse of the crypto project in great detail. Amid the turmoil, Kwan lives in freedom and even launched another initiative. However, many people, notably the hacktivist community Anonymous, found this infuriating and disrespectful. Anonymous released a YouTube video to take control of the situation regarding the failure of Terra, Terra UST, and the ecosystems in May. The group has vowed to ensure that Do Kwan, Terra's designer and founder, is brought to justice as soon as appropriate. The group was confident that Kwan was also responsible for several other atrocities, I should say. On Sunday, a webcast made by the hacking group Anonymous rehashed a long list of Kwan's alleged wrongdoings, including a withdrawing of $80 million per month from Luna and Terra Luna before its collapse and his part of the failure of the stablecoin basis cash, which Kwan is accused of creating in 2020 under the alias Rick Sanchez. Boy. Unfortunately, nothing can be done to undo the harm that Quan has caused if he isn't listening. The only thing the community can do at this stage is hold you accountable and make sure that you are prosecuted as quickly as possible. Boy, this is the aftermath of the collapse. This article, Yahoo News, Anonymous puts target on crypto boss who oversaw a $40 billion crypto price crash. And this was written by Anthony Carpenter. And that is an image of the anonymous, because they're anonymous. We've all seen. Them. And this here, Doquan has made a name for himself with his arrogant tactics, trolling competitors, critics, and acting like he would never fail. However, he was quickly knocked down by the markets. The louder they are, the harder they tend to fail fall. Anonymous accused Quan of cashing out billions of dollars worth of investor funds, something he's publicly denied. Now here, I'm going to share part of an interview from Coinage that it was just released two weeks ago where they went and flew to South Korea to meet with Do Quan. Fair use. They are the first ones to talk with him since this collapse. Let's listen in.
Over 72 whirlwind hours, confidence in Doe went to zero, and Luna went to zero with it. That was three months ago, and Terra's true believers have been searching for answers ever since. Time is of the essence here because even as investigators sift through the rubble, Terra's already launched Luna 2.0, a scaled down copy of the Terra blockchain stripped of that stable coin that once fueled its rise. So Doquan's building again, starting nearly from scratch. But for most of us, it's hard to focus on his next act when there are still so many questions about his last. So we flew to Singapore to interview Doe over two days in his office and his home to see if Terra's collapse is really just a case of failure or a fraud. What do you point to as kind of the easiest defensive? It's not fraud. I don't think it's like a morality issue, but it's like coming in from like a loss of this magnitude and especially touching upon an industry that requires a lot of technical background knowledge to be able to understand. It's just like very hard to process all of that and then come to a balanced conclusion when there's so much pain and anger in the air. To see it all play out in a span of 72 hours, were you even surprised at like how quickly it unraveled? Uh, I just didn't think this would happen. You know, thinking about this and then trying to build this ecosystem and community was basically what I spent the last five years on every waking moment. Um, yeah, it's, I just haven't found the words to describe, you know, what that feels like, but, um, I, like, I, I'm sure that a lot of people in the community that lost their money, life savings, and, uh, different projects that we're building on top of Terra probably went through similar and it's quite possibly worse experiences. And as far as like a creator of anything like this, I mean, it's brutal. Obviously, like in high school, I paused it right there because he was getting ready to say hindsight is twenty twenty. Where well, everything, of course, is twenty twenty in hindsight in life. Does I mean that's not an answer. Watch all the video, make your own conclusions. The whole point is to always do your own research and never put your future in anyone else's hands, no matter who it is. This is a perfect example. I mean, he's not been convicted of anything, but everyone, he's the founder, so he knows something. It won't replace any losses, but by using our links to Coinbase and Crypto.com today, you can earn up to 20, I'm sorry, $65 in free crypto. Use that for gas, money, or snacks, or whatever. I just can't. Many people, millions of people have lost money. Uh, that's why I bring these stories to you. I covered, we covered this in December. At the time, it was great. Prior to that, it was great. It's not great anymore. And everything is going to come out. Everything done in the dark always comes to light. This too will come to light and we will share it with you. Now, if this episode has been of value to you, in all addition, we have an entire library. Look here, all these videos that we've made and educated and share with you. Many of you have made money off of these videos and we're just getting started. But check out the vast library this is all on you. No one else is going to care but you. And lastly, no matter how much you have right now, you have to protect what you have. The only way to do so is to get your own cold storage wallet. Less than 20% of you actually have one, which I won't never understand. But regardless, Ledger is one of the leading worldwide manufacturers of cold storage wallets. They have several models to choose from. Put your crypto in your wallet. It's safe. You control it. You're the only one that has access to it. It's the only way you're truly in control. If you want to contribute again, you can do so with any ERC20 token to our address, which is in the description. But until then, next time, get in there and make it happen.